Hi folks, welcome to Revision. Today I'm starting a new series that will talk about guilds. I'll be giving you my five years worth of experience in owning and operating a guild in ESO, along with some valuable advice. So let's get started. When you start a guild for the first time, you become the guild master of that guild, and you determine the name and alliance designation of that guild. These can be changed later on only if you contact customer service in Elder Scrolls Online. The game might change this method in the future, but for now, that is the method that once you pick the name and alliance designation, you can only go and change it through customer service unless there are changes made in the game. Now, the rank system in a guild is controlled by the guild master, and the guild master can control the type of uh, rank you set up, uh, what privileges you have, and uh, what kind of uh, permissions you give to each respective member in that rank. You can have multiple people in a rank, or you can have a rank specifically for one person. Now, so unless you pass the guild mastership on to someone else, you control the creation of ranks and titles within a guild. The guild master is the only one who controls the creation of a guild tabard also, and that is found in the heraldy uh, category. And as you can see, that's how my guild ta tabard looks like. And I can control the style of the tabard and how it looks like, the logo, and the color. But the guild master is the only one that has control over that. When you have picked a guild name and the alliance designation of your guild, it will be created for you and you will start off with one person, you. From there on out, it is up to you, the leader of the guild, to determine the direction of the guild and how you want to operate. Now, before you start recruiting, it is important to set goals for your guild. Before you start recruiting, determine ahead of time what kind of guild your operation is going to be. Most early guilds in the game make a mistake of trying to be what is called an everything guild. In other words, they want to have it all. They want to do trials, they want to do PvP, they want to do traders, all that stuff. And there's an old saying in life, the person that tries to please everyone, pleases no one. The same holds true here. In the early stages of a guild development for your guild, you want to focus on a niche or specific aspect of your guild that creates an identity for it. You want to be known for something in particular. There are thousands of guilds in this game. What will you, your guild be known for? Well, there are certain categories for this. You can choose to be a PvP guild, a Trials guild, a Roleplay guild, a Social guild, a Trading guild, a Dungeon guild, or even just a Storage guild. Now keep in mind, if you want to have a Storage guild, you have to have a minimum of 10 people, and you have to keep those 10 people if you want access to a guild bank. It requires 50 people to be able to have a guild store and have the ability to apply for a public trader. So keep that in the back of your mind. If any of your goals are to be a storage guild or a trading guild, these are the thresholds you must meet. Now, when you are well known for your niche and have established the identity of your guild, you can expand it into other categories and have your guild do more things. Keep in mind, though, that even if you do other things, your core identity or niche for your guild should always remain the same. 
changing the core identity identity or niche of your guild after it has been developed could lead to disastrous results for your operations. So make sure once this is established to stick with it so you don't frustrate or confuse your members. You want to have a clear identity or niche for your operation. Let's talk a little bit about success and failure within a guild. What makes a guild a success or a failure? Well, to answer this question, the guild master determines the success or a failure of a guild. You, as the leader of the operation, set the policy for determining the success or failure of your operation. The most common mistake guild masters make is comparing their guilds to other guilds. The measure of success or failure is not comparing your guild to another, but what you set your goal towards. Comparing your guild to another guild and using that to determine your success is a lack of leadership, and it will hurt you and your guild and your leadership within your guild. Now, I'll use my guild as an example for this. My guild is a trading guild. It's been in operation for five years. So the core identity for my guild has to do with marketplace activities, getting public traders, um, selling within my guild. That is the goal for my uh, guild. That is my core identity to be in a trading establishment, to have a public trader, so forth. So the measure of success is to provide a public trader each week for my members. In the early stages of my guild development, I was a success for about, I would say, 60 to 70% of the time for my goals. I didn't win every week, but I was winning more than I was losing, so to speak. Now, when multi-bid came out, my win ratio became 100%. My guild always had a steady trader or a public trader for my members. Now, there will be some people that say my guild is a failure because I don't have a high profile trader or I'm not in the mournhold trader or I don't have, you know, X amount of people and so forth. Let me tell you something. That doesn't mean anything. Okay? Those people are not in charge of my guild. I am. And as guild master, I set the policy and measure for success or failure within my guild. This is the kind of thinking that a leader of a guild does. Leaders provide clear goals and strive to meet those goals. When you outsource this task to others, you fail to provide proper leadership for your operation. As the leader of your operation, you can always change the goals for your guild as time goes by, but never ever let other people determine the measure of success or failure for your guild. Now, as a guild master, you are responsible for the guild's development. In the beginning, you start with one person, you. It is up to you to expand on that. Every guild master that has founded a guild needs to recruit other players to build up the guild. When you get your numbers high enough, you can delegate this task to other people or even the guild itself. But keep in mind that once other players start recruiting for you, you must keep an eye out for the kind of people that are being brought into your guild. If you have players bringing in people who are nasty or scamming other players, it will become a reflection of your operations. So make sure you handle all problems that arise from bad eggs immediately. If you let bad people fester in your guild, it will bring down your operations and possibly lead to your guild failing. Handle all problematic people swiftly before this happens. And finally, never, ever put up with someone that tells you 
you are not the guild master. You are the founding member of your operation. You built it up. You set the goals, and you are in charge of the operation. Anyone that challenges your authority is an insurrectionist and needs to be put in their place or removed from your guild immediately. Because if you don't stand up for yourself, it becomes a failure of leadership on your part, and it will lead to disastrous results in your guild. So make sure you handle such a situation. In the coming weeks, I'll be adding more lessons to this series that goes more in-depth to the creation of a guild and talks about other subjects that are vital for maintaining your operations. However, I want to say this, leadership is by far the most important aspect for a healthy and successful guild. Anyone who wishes to be a guild master must demonstrate and develop their leadership skills if they wish to have a sound operation. There will be some challenges that lie ahead, but as long as you handle them in an appropriate manner, you will be a successful guild master. And the advice that I've given you today in this video will help you tremendously in setting forth clear goals and to position yourself as a leader within your operation so that you and your guild can be a success. All right, folks, so I hope this video was helpful to you. There's going to be more videos in the future about guilds, so stay tuned and um, definitely like this video and become a subscriber so you can keep on top of these um, future coming videos and any other videos I make on Elder Scrolls Online. I'm not just going to be doing videos on guilds. I'm going to be doing videos on all kinds of stuff within Elder Scrolls Online. Um, but this is going to be a special series that I'll put out here and there um, in the coming weeks. And it's going to have more lessons for you on how to develop your guild. So stay tuned, keep watching, and I'll see you next time.